Isn't that something? Isn't that beautiful? These young men working together for a common goal. Not just winning basketball games, but bringing out the best in each other. I don't want to go back to that place. Stop. I can't show you the pictures. I don't know what happened. What are you doing about what happened to him? It's about respect. My son was great. You need to be very careful with that word. American Crime. Season premiere January 6th on ABC. Thanks, everybody. Guess I have to video this. That's, this is what I do. I'll video you too. Ready? Oh, you don't have... No, don't, no, don't oh, get no, me. Really, don't, okay, okay, wait. Hold, hold on. Oh! It's season two of, of a show that when I interviewed John for in the first season, I said, I think my entire interview was me just going, how the hell did you get this on network television? This is an incredibly complex show filled with depth and, 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 and issues that most cable networks wouldn't even touch. And now you're in season two and you're going even further. Yeah, I, first of all, thank you for joining us here and thank you for joining us, I guess, globally, all over the world. <laughs> on the internet. Stunning. <laughs> Um, and thank you for having us. When we sat down, and I think, you know, Felicity and I, we talk about it sometimes, we went into that pilot thinking, well, we can make this good because nobody's ever going to see it. So let's just do this. Let's be bold. Let's try to take storytelling in different directions and offer up perspectives that people don't normally see. And I do think it was a grand experiment on ABC's part and the part of the studio. But at the same time, when you look at the show, to me, the way it looks, the way it's constructed, what you see on camera and things you don't see behind the scenes, it's one of the more reflective shows. So ultimately, you can never take anything for granted that it's going, people are going to respond to the storytelling or the construction or the emotionality, but I'm not at all surprised that a show that has a reflective nature, uh, people then see themselves in characters that look like themselves and sometimes don't even look like themselves or don't think like themselves, but the humanity and the essence is there. It's reflective, but at the same time, it's not lurid, nor is it, is it tacky in how it's reflective, which is something that I like about it. It's subtle. It's not saying, for instance, oh, this happened last year. Let's tell that story on screen right now. It's finding the sort of parable that works within what ails us as a, 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 as a country. And I want to know, I mean, outside of that, Felicity, Talk to me about the character this season versus last season. How you come up with this? Do you work with John to come up with this character? Or does John come to you and say, this is where I think we're going to go? What, what do you think about this character? I think when you're working with someone like John, you just go, yes. Whatever he comes up with, you go, yes. Um, but I, I wanted to add something to what John said, which is I think great storytelling and great writing will always find an audience. And I think... That's not usual. I think what's unusual is a network television, ABC, having the ovaries to back it up and give it to someone like John and go, go, you do your vision and we will only support you. And I think that's what's groundbreaking. And I think they're changing the face of network TV. Absolutely. Um, you come from, you had a show on network TV for an extended period of time. That was also a pretty groundbreaking show in many ways. Where do you think we are now with network television versus where we were then in terms of how ABC is pushing boundaries? Oh my God, it's, it's, it's like nowadays compared to the Paleolithic period, things go so quickly. Um, you know, that, those two little words, binge watching, I think changed everything. I think people's appetites are not based on a network, they're based on quality now. And, you know, it's so varied where you can find content and people watch it in many, many different ways. And that's changed the playing field. And I think that's why we have a golden age of television. And I think that's why you can get quality like John on network TV. And people watch it and people are excited about it. But it's also one of the things that changed in terms of the paradigm of television. I don't know that last year or five years ago, you could look at a show and say, hey, we're going to construct this with... Academy Award winners, Academy Award nominees, Emmy winners, Grammy winners, and to say to performers, uh, we're going to try this for a year, and it's not going to, it's not going to be a five-year contract. It used to be back in the day, it was a five-year contract, 22 episodes, that's great. There's nothing like gainful employment, there's nothing like being able to present creativity, but there is also, I think, for creative people sometimes going, yeah, this is great, but season three kind of feels like two and a half. So now to be able to go to performers and say, Felicity, we'd love to work with you. 
let's see how it works for a year. If we're digging it and it works and it works for the audience, let's try to figure it out for next year as opposed to, great, now we're married and what's it going to be like seven years from now? Uh, that's really changed. And I think that's why you see this fluidity between, you know, used to be back in the day, well, that's a television actor. I don't know if they're going to work in, in, uh, on the big screen or as a big screen star, they're not going to do television. The quality and the fluidity, it's all the same to audiences. Uh, they just want to know it's quality. They want to know that the people involved love what they're doing, care about it, and put everything that they can into it. I, I, the cast that we have... Unbelievable. I, I, just uh, unbelievable is not quite the word for it. <laughs> It's just people who excel in every single discipline. Uh, what they bring to it and, and the emotion that they bring to it, uh, particularly in a show where we try to do very few setups, uh, we really try to focus on the performance. You gotta have people who can fill the frame and they fill the frame. I don't think there's a, sh uh, a show on television right now that's more dedicated to the nuances of the human face than, than American Crime. The whole show is mainly close-ups, and you get yeah. to watch actors really perform in both subtle ways and, and in big ways when necessary. I want to talk about the construction of this season of the show and finding the central story. Uh, uh, an Indiana high school. Yeah. It's a, um, I don't want to say Steubenville, because it's not necessarily that, but it's about, yeah. uh, it's about a rape at a Midwest high school or a sexual assault at a Midwest yeah. high school. How did you come up with that? Was that your idea, or do you get in a room with a group of writers and start pitching ideas of what you're thinking about in terms yeah. of what's going on in the world? Well, part of it, there's another producer involved, Michael McDonald, uh, not that Michael McDonald, uh, who doesn't is come in and producers. start singing doesn't some start doobie singing. songs? <laughs> People often ask him to, but he doesn't. And we, when there was even a possibility that we could get picked up for a second season, we really thought about what perspectives, uh, what ideas, what issues had we not perhaps excavated fully in the first season. We thought about socioeconomic issues, issues of sexual orientation, education, uh, family. Uh, Felicity was talking about this earlier in our first season. It was really about the disillusion of family. And this season, it's much more about the fusion of families. Families coming together, still in opposition with others, but coming together. And then it was looking at our cast. You know, last year, Felicity took on a character that I personally, and I can't be wholly objective, but who I think was one of the most singular characters on television, Barb Hanlon. Uh, but Barb was, you know, her ideas and her point of view were extremely challenging, to say the least. And it was very important for me, with all the characters, but particularly with Felicity, to have a character that was anipode to what she was playing in the previous season. Um, last year, if it was someone who was distanciational, this was someone who was embracing, charismatic, political in the best sense of the words, and to try to present all her performers with Here's something completely different. Now let's try to work together and to find this character, and I, and I really believe everybody did. So talk about, uh, about your character versus uh, last season, Felicity. Uh, I tried to dodge that question earlier. I know, I saw you try to dodge Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> you want me to come um, something? Yes, I will. Um, my character last year uh, was very reactive, and she was sort of carved from circumstances. You know, she was sort of eroded by hardships and time and, and difficulties. And she came from a very emotional place. And I think it was by episode seven of season two, and I, I was talking to John and I went, I don't really know what I'm doing in this character. I know it's a little late to say I don't know what I'm doing because we're almost done. Do you think the dark hair is gonna be enough? Um, and it was because she was, vi she's that character, Leslie Graham, is very intellectual and very macro, and she's 20 steps ahead of everybody else. So being, playing her was an intellectual exercise for me. It was about looking at all the chess pieces and moving them around. And I think by episode six or seven, I was a little bewildered because I'm usually um, connected emotionally and not cerebrally. So that's. That was the it's difference. Odd, it's odd that you would say that because there is was... Is that not there, true? No, it's not that it's not true because you're, you're sort of speaking from your experience, but I found, Leslie, what was engaging about it was that she was ahead of everybody else, and by the time people caught up, you even seen that first episode, Lily Taylor uh, plays the mother of a young man who accuses uh, an elite prep school's championship basketball team of sexually assaulting him, and... By the time that first episode ends and everyone else is sort of realizing what is going on, Leslie is already has an understanding of the situation and how to navigate it that is best for uh, 
the responsibilities that she's been given in terms of navig uh, in terms of shepherding this school. And for me, and I think it's sometimes difficult for the actors because uh, there's a complex, I hope, semi-complex set of circumstances that we lay out for American Crime, but they're not aware of it. So yeah. they don't know. It's not like I sit down with them and go, hey, so Felicity, by episode seven, you're going to be here. Rightly or wrongly, I, I'm very, at least with this show, uh, very much believe it's about reacting to things that you can't plan on. Everybody plans, you, you get up in the morning, you're going to have breakfast, and you're going to do this, go to work or hang out with your friends, and things happen that are beyond your control. And Leslie was the only character who could see those things happening, and I think that without making it sound as though uh, you know, it's a mutual admiration society, there was never a moment where I did not believe that Leslie Graham saw the things she needed to see up until that point in episode about eight where she could no longer control their circumstances and things change in a whole fundamental other way. Um, so I didn't, if you didn't know what you're doing, I didn't, I didn't see well, it. Well, I, I guess I just, I'd never, I've never played a character like her before. I've, uh, I've never played someone smart. Um, <laughs> and so I just never connected to a character in a way that was so... I don't know, su such an overseeing, she kind of could see the whole landscape. And maybe by episode seven, I, I was bewildered by the altitude. Well, we did know. have a, a, a long conversation about politics. There was a moment where um, Felicity's character, Leslie, talks about being political. And we had this discussion because there was a concern that it came off as a pejorative. And I really didn't want it to be a pejorative. You know, it's so easy. We oftentimes, we have a, a disenchantment with politicians. and we. Oftentimes we, we try not to elect people because they, oh, you know they're, they're so political, but you would never go to a, a doctor and go you know he, he's too much of a, a of a doctor I don't really want to be around him you know that guy's too much of a mechanic I don't want him working on my car, and I I, I said to you one time you know there's a, a phrase it's certainly not mine uh, that politics is the art of the possible, and when it works really well it's about people coming together to solve problems for the good of society and there was an element of that with Leslie that it was problem solving for the good of her society, which was this private institution. Now, people would look at it and say, that's not what's best for me, but that's not her charge. And that's where I hope the complications would come from Leslie, saying, it's not my responsibility to figure that out. It's my responsibility to protect those who uh, have given uh, me their greatest asset, which is their children. But that, in many ways, is the story of many of the characters in the show. It's a yeah. show, this season in particular, is about self But me most of all. <laughs> You dodged my question about you, so I'm moving to the other ones. I answered it. <laughs> uh, but it's about self-preservation and family yeah. preservation, right? This is going to, I have to protect what's going to happen to me and my family. This is where you go over here. You figure it out yourself, and you're protecting your career. And many would call that careerist in the face of drama. We, we would want to put ourselves in their shoes and say, well, I would do this. That's not necessarily true. Most people would try to protect their career because that's how Wait, you protect Wait, I disagree. Your I don't think she is protecting her career. I think she's... <laughs> Look at that. Don't get insulted. Um, I, 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 I'm out of here. She's protecting the institution. She was given as he, she was given the job, and whether she's working at a private school or a Fortune 500 company or a non-for-profit or a public school, she is there to protect the institution, and she never puts her career or her own self-interests above that. Uh, you mentioned the dye in your hair uh, for this character. There's a shot in the in the pilot that's from behind your head that focuses solely on the color of your hair, and I thought it was an odd articulation of your character. It was someone's, someone must have had that idea. John, was that, do you know the shot that I'm talking about? I, I know the shot that you're talking about. I think it's the one where we, we, we actually, the in, in, yeah, there's yeah. A, a fundraising event. We actually just make a very artful uh, uh, camera loop around Felicity, and I say that only because we, we do not use a lot of camera movement, and one of the reasons that I wanted to use it there really was about the language of cinema and giving Felicity's character, Leslie, a truly grand entrance. And uh, there's a moment, the first time we see Felicity, and I, hopefully, I try to offer up things that have some kind of impact that are equivalent to what is necessary for the story. So if there's no need for a lot of camera work, I try to avoid that. If there's a moment of impact, I try to, to direct towards that. And Felicity, in the shot prior to the one you're talking about, she starts with deep in the frame, head back to camera, we're looking at the back of her head, she turns, she crosses to a donor, 
and gives that donor a kiss on the lips and, and uh, actually on the cheek and whispers something in their ear, but we see this smile, we see this energy and the charisma, and then the following shot, we, we, we pan around her and see all of the people that she's talking to and essentially how she's able to hold the crowd. So part of it, not so much about the color of her hair, but that um, really trying to say that when someone is so charismatic and captivating, we don't necessarily have to see their face, we don't necessarily have to, uh, no pun intended, or read their lips, but what they are able to do, how they are able to hold a crowd is so vested in who they are that it, it becomes less about them and less about their facade and more about their energy, and that's what we wanted to say with that shot. That really, I, again, in a, in a normal broadcast television show, the executives would be going, but we, it's Felicity, we can't see her face, it's our star, we need to see her face. And in this circumstance, you're like, great, we see that she is in front of a crowd of people who are just galvanized by what they're saying, go with that shot. And that's the beauty of being at ABC in 2016. Felicity, what's it like for you to be able to be a part of this show two seasons in, but to be able, not to just be able to a working actress, to have a show on television, which you've had before, but to be a part of a show that, as John said, is reflective, to be a part of something that feels like a, it, it, it's greater, not just dramatically, but socially? It feels... It feels wonderful. I mean, I think the art of having a narrative that sparks discussion and that is current and not just ref not just reflective of last year, but you know, certainly with the first season of American Crime and the second season, um, you know, things kept coming up in the news that were so apropos to what we happened to be shooting that day. But what I love about it is that through the storytelling, through great storytelling, where you're going, I wonder what happens next, I wonder what happens next, yeah. then the discussion comes out of that. That it's not, it's not issue television. You know, we're not going, let's discuss sexual orientation, let's discuss sexual assault, let's, you know, socioeconomic diversity, anything like that. It's through the story. And because John never gives you, like, a good guy and a bad guy, and your perspective as an audience member, certainly in the first season, shifts. You're like, oh, I hate her. And then by episode four, you're going, oh, I feel for her. That's what causes discussion and thought. When you break down, what does it mean to possibly be a racist, let's say, in American Crime first season? How, how is that built? And I think with empathy comes understanding, and with understanding, hopefully, becomes unity. I want to talk about something in the second episode of, of this season. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, yeah. but there's an examination of the assault victim. Yeah. Um, and it's an, inc it's an incredible scene. I've never seen anything like it on television. It's daring, and it's, and it, and it's, and it's different for ways that, I, again, I don't want to spoil too much. Can you talk about the decision going into that scene? And I mean, it seems like so much of the, of the series this season could be built around the idea of that scene. It's such a powerful moment. Well, uh, first and foremost, I have to give praise to our casting director, Kim Coleman, who uh, found a group of amazing young actors, and uh, you know, I only say young because they are really some 16, 17, 18 years old. Um, they're all really phenomenal, not just in their ability, but when you put them across, again, from performers who have been doing at the top of their game for a long time and have won or been nominated for or presented with almost every single award, it, it's easy enough. I mean, there are days where I go on the set and I'm like, I don't think I really want to give a note today. I don't want to upset <laughs> anybody. So can you imagine being uh, 16 or 17 years old, one young lady who uh, plays uh, a, a character named Evie, uh, Angelique uh, uh, Rivera is the actress's name. Uh, the only other job that she ever had as a performer, she was playing Princess Jasmine at Disney World was her other job. And our, our uh, casting director, Kim Coleman, found her, and she's absolutely amazing. The scene you're talking about, a young actor by the name of Connor Jessup. He's great, um, yeah. Uh, he is uh, being examined uh, with the fear on the part of his mother uh, that he's been sexually assaulted. And the scene, without giving too much away, is very harrowing, but what this year, I think coming out of last year, as Felicity was saying, we realized that daily as we were shooting, we did not expect and we did not realize how close the show would, would mirror things that were going on in, in real life. And I think this season we were more sensitive to the subject matter they're dealing with, even though it's creative narrative, there are people in real life who are going through this 
right now somewhere. Very sadly, over the holiday weekend, there was a report out of uh, Tennessee about uh, a young man who was sexually assaulted by members of a basketball team, which is exactly what is going on on our show. And it is a story that we heard over and over again. Uh, and we can get into the numbers about sexual assault and how underreported it is, irrespective of gender and all those kinds of things. But knowing that there are people who are going through this, or knowing that there are people who may go through it, and uh, not just trying to get a, a jolt out of people for purposes of quote unquote entertainment, uh, we wanted to try to have an emotional honesty to the things that we're doing. So the scene you're talking about, uh, that was a real sexual assault nurse who was basically going through the procedure with Connor as the actor. And we had the format for the scene, we went through it with her about what she would say, and we basically rolled the camera and told her to conduct the interview as you would and the examination as you would. And there's very little else that one needs wow. to do when you have an individual who dedicated her life to dealing with people who have been assaulted and a phenomenal actor, I'm gonna quit using the word young because he's phenomenal irrespective of his age, um, who's able to quite literally put himself in the place of being examined. So it's a powerful scene, but it's powerful not because of anything that we did, truly, not in terms of the writing or even the directing, it was just, we're gonna roll the camera and, and do what you need to do. And we've, we've done that on several circumstances within the show. And it's a real challenge to marry the, uh, the narrative with, with, with elements that are nonfiction. I would say uh, what's so viscerally shocking about that scene is the, uh, the exchange of gender, which is we don't, uh, you know, uh, to speak as layman, we don't expect to see a man in that situation. We should never expect to see a woman in that situation. And it was, viscerally shocking to see a man in that situation because I had never even really thought of that or seen that and it lent a completely new form of empathy to any woman in that situation as well. It was just, it, it was so smart and, 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 and so beautiful the way that it was constructed. It suddenly gave a completely different precedence to the whole idea of, of that type of investigation or, or victims in that situation. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, again, and I, I, I touched on this, you know, the numbers, last year we dealt with, with, with murder and, and drug addiction, and, you know, look, you, you, you hope that every member of your audience is watching out of some kind of intellectual curiosity as opposed to being visited by these things. And with murder and with addiction, there is a bit of distance. The sad and painful reality is that, uh, a large number of our audience is going to have been visited by sexual assault. Personally, someone in their family, um, it's underreported, it's under adjudicated uh, with any gender. But the reality also is we live in a society where there are special circumstances. We have special circumstances with certain crimes, with certain bias laws, because we as a people view things differently. And we wanted to make sure that if we were going to tell a story that we offered a perspective that was honorific with any circumstance that it happened, but also is there another perspective where it would take perhaps an individual like yourself, and I'm not saying that, that you don't have a capacity to be empathetic, no matter who may have been victimized, but for someone else to sit there and go, wow, no, this is not about them, this is about us. Yeah. And also then, you know, Regina's character, there's a moment where she goes, no, that, that didn't happen because guys don't do that to guys. And for me, particularly for people of color, when they show an aspect of not being able to empathize with other people, that to me, I always hope and expect, not that we are better, but that we'd have certain capacities to empathize, but I know from our community there are places where we don't. And so it's important for me to have, to, to have an opportunity to show as many perspectives as possible. And if in showing another perspective, again, we see more of ourselves than we would normally, um, I hope and believe that elevates not just the storytelling in, in the terms of entertainment, but what people are getting out of it. Absolutely. Uh, I think we have some time for uh, audience Q&A. Does anyone have time for, anyone have a question out there in the audience? Couldn't you just listen to John all night? I'm just like, <laughs> Hey, audience, follow up John. Try it. Yeah. Go for it. Good afternoon. Uh, Ernest Robinson. I'm a director. Being on television, was there a certain mold you have to fit into from the screen to what broadcast TV expects, like you said, this like such a mold you have to fit into. How was that 
transition or a challenge to say, okay, we can't go here, we can go here, but then we have to keep it here. Like, how do you get everybody on the same page in order to be able to relate to us, you know, out here watching? Shout to your, your trainer as well. Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, oh. Yeah. He's talking about, he's definitely not talking about me. <laughs> he is not talking about me. I will say, other than our restrictions that we have because uh, ABC has a, uh, a broadcast license, there are certain things that we know that we can't do, but I, I never felt like that was a restriction in terms of the content. You know, if we have to use certain words or, you know, if we, we have to show someone naked to tell the story that we're telling, then there may be a flaw with the story to begin with. But I have to be honest, um, I've been very fortunate to work in film and in television. Uh, this was a singular experience. and the partnerships that I hope and believe that we've had, uh, the level of trust that has been afforded to not only me, but all of us. ABC has been nothing but supportive. They never said, you know, great, that's a terrific story, but you know, you know, guys, touching guys, could we maybe not do that? Uh, you know, racism, could we tone that down a little <laughs> bit? Uh, n never had that, that issue. And uh, from my perspective, uh, having two seasons with largely the same cast, having people who are inquisitive, people who really push you, want to try things. Uh, it, it, it's been a great experience. Well, Felicity, for you, uh, you've done television before, you've done movies, but I mean, you were a teacher and I think you started at the Atlantic Theater Company, right? With, with David Mamet? Yeah, mm -hmm, um, right here in New York City. I think I just recently watched the the Spanish Prisoner. It's such a it's, it's a different kind of acting that you get. I think when you work with Mamet, right? So how do you translate that, and how many tools do you sort of feel like you have in your box? Yeah, you get that good kind of acting with Mamet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do how do you translate the tools? Yeah, how do you how did you find the different tools? Like, how does Mamet work for you when you go to television? Can you bring some of that with you, or is it a completely different thing? You know, I sound like a broken record, but it really starts with the script. And for an actor, uh, are there any actors in the house? Yes? You know, say our, yes. Our, just say yes. Just nod your head. <laughs> just give it to her. Um, you know, our currency is the moment. I mean, that's, that's where an actor lives. You just go moment to moment. That's why we, we tend to be a little, um, we, we can't see the big picture. So, no, I, I think... You know, good acting is good acting. Whether you're you're doing a Mamet or or, or John Ridley, um, you you go for the same thing, which is truth of the moment. Um, and well, I, I saw you. It was in the Anarchist between seasons. I started doing a, a, a Mamet play. It was just her and Rebecca Pigeon for wow. ninety minutes, and it's there is a difference. <laughs> <laughs> there, there ain't no resetting in, in Mamet. It's, you got to do it. But the level, the level of the script rises you up. Next question. We're going to take a question from an online viewer. So Isaac would like to know if you could pick the setting for a future season of American Crime, where would it be? Los I'm Angeles. I'm so interested. A block from my house. Yeah. <laughs> we shot down in Austin, Texas, which is a great environment. Um, but the majority of the cast and the crew, and not, not the crew, but uh, many of us were from Los Angeles. So I think if we could pick a setting, it would probably be... Somewhere in the valley. <laughs> just to be home. Just to be with our families, I think. Or Paris. Or Paris. One of those two. American crime, Paris. American crime, Bora Bora. <laughs> Next question. Hi, guys. So, Felicity, I just have to say, huge fan of Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Bow down to you. Um, so, can you guys talk a little bit about Timothy Hutton? In a good way? Is he here? Is that <laughs> When he's not that drunk, that guy is great. <laughs> if you Tim can catch and, him before noon. <laughs> Tim and Felicity, from the jump, have been, I don't know, they're like, when they're, and when they're not complete artists, they're complete pranksters. When they're not consummate professionals, they are the best of time. I, I, it's really been, honestly, you know, Tim Hutton is a guy for some of us that we, we truly grew up with. Felicity was an individual, other than transparent, it was my wife and I, oh, Sunday night, got to watch Felicity, yeah. Desperate Housewives. So there was a moment, I think on the first day when we were doing the pilot, and he got it, you know, the pilot, even though it was about, only about two years ago, I wasn't, I don't, people, I was in a, a whole different world. So you show up on that first day, and it's Felicity Huffman and Tim Hutton, and there really was this sort of moment of like, I don't, do I give them a note? Do I just roll the camera? 
They've been partners, they've had faith, they believe, they've given everything, and there are moments with the two of them. I love the cast, I love all of them, but there were honestly days we go, it's Tim and Felicity today, uh, and there was a certain level of intimacy that they had as professionally as performers that you knew what you were going to get. Um, it, it was just going to be a solid, solid piece of work, irrespective of the amount of time we had, you know, I hope that it's good on the page. Felicity keeps complimenting the page, but uh, every element has to work. And that was a day where you knew this, these two individuals, whether they're a couple, whether they're working together in opposition, it was going to be a pretty terrific scene. Yeah, he's been doing it his whole life. And to get someone who, who never takes it cavalierly, never takes it for granted, is always that good amount of frightened, you know, when, which means you're off balance, which is good because it means you're reaching. He's... Um, he works so hard. He's always willing to rehearse. He's always willing to go above and beyond. And uh, he's a total pleasure to be with if when he's sober. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have time for one more question from the audience. Yes, hello. I Hi. just wanted to know, since you're dealing with such controversial and sensitive topics, um, were any parts um, of filming, were they difficult to film? And did they struck a chord with you? And if you watch the show, if you watch your own acting, was it um, difficult to watch it as well? Uh, so the, the question was because the, the subject matter was so sensitive, were there days that were particularly difficult uh, to render on set and in watching it, were, are there times where you're transported to a particularly emotional place, even though you know what's happening, just watching it uh, as, as a viewer? You don't want to take that one? I, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a difficult show. There are days on the set uh, we have one of the best crews. They are true artisans. Uh, people are just silent. You know, they come to work in the morning. They are excited to do the work. Uh, there are days where people are silent, and there are days where uh, I will I will turn in a script and scenes are redacted because I I I, I don't want people getting ahead of what's going on. And we we go to table reads and we kind of laugh. Oh, it's a redacted scene. I wonder what's going to happen. Get out. It's a little tough. Uh, it was tough this weekend seeing this article. Is it redacted, one of those things? Because you don't want people to sort of... I don't want people to focus on uh, this scene is going to be shocking in a traditional sense or getting right. ahead of what's going on or, yeah. or things like that and allowing... You know, it's, it's never to the point where we're showing up on the day and, and, and pulling the veil off a scene and people, ah, what are we going to do? How are we going to film this? But it's one of those things where don't, let's not get ahead of it. Uh, and, and they tend to be quite emotional. They're, they're days where it's really, really tough. And the really tough part is honestly after people started viewing the show and people would come up and say, uh, I, I have a, a relative who was uh, addicted and, and I've never quite seen a portrayal like that. Uh, I know someone who has been, uh, had, had bias in their life because of race, because of gender, because of orientation and this allowed us to talk about it in certain ways. I, I have to tell you, honestly, someone forwarded this email over the weekend uh, about what was going on, and you just go, God, it just, it's a little much. Uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to present it and talk about it. I, I would love to do a project where it, it is a little bit more about entertainment. It's like Sullivan's Travels. Sometimes entertainment for the sake of entertainment is great. It's really great. But I also know, you know, we have been, afforded something here by ABC that is unique. Uh, I love what's going on in streaming. I love what's going on in uh, cable right now. But you don't see a lot of others represented. And if I may say, without being aggrandizing, it's not even just what you're seeing in front of the camera. We have more female directors on our show than the majority of shows. More female and directors of color. Our entire post-production I shouldn't say our entire, our, all of our editors are female or of color. Our producers, the majority of them, are female. Um, you know, we have an opportunity to really create change, and not just change so we feel good when we go home. Uh, there's not a lot left to get for me out of the business. There's a lot to give. Uh, and I look at the folks sitting here, and, and this looks like our universe on our show. Uh, so... Those are the days where I go, okay, we're doing a little bit of something because these folks are going to remain, you know. And I'm at that age. I don't, I don't know how much is left, but they got a lot. These folks got stories. 
it's incredible to me that you can you can bring up things that are happening in the news that are still tragic, but somehow art is still reflecting those things in a very mainstream way. It's not like people have to go way out of their way to find out to find tragic reflections of who they are or just reflections of their. It's it's here. It's it's in a very mainstream place, and yeah. as you said, it's an amazing opportunity that you that you get to do that. Absolutely, and I don't. You know, look, we're we're at that point. Felicity was saying earlier that we don't. You know, they're not mutually exclusive, that an audience that wants mainstream, hey, I don't want to see any art with that, I don't, I don't want to see anything creative with that, uh, or people who like creative, well, I'm not going to watch ABC. Uh, what ABC does, you know, we, we don't, I don't want to quite say it in a pejorative way, but there is something nice in a streaming universe where people aren't reporting your fast nationals the next morning. I mean, that was the thing, you wake up the next morning and people want to go, I hear your numbers, you suck, because you didn't hit that. Uh, and ABC has been great about, don't worry about the numbers. Do what you do. Uh, find the reward in just trying to tell stories that other people may not want to tell or feel like. You can't talk about racism on broadcast. You can't talk about orientation in this particular sense on broadcast. I think broadcast has actually done a great job. You look at Modern Family. You look at uh, Fresh Off the Boat. You look at what Shonda's doing. You look at Blackish. You know, ABC is not, they're past... Let's do it because, yeah, well, let's be socially responsible. They do it because folks like this go, hey, I want to see those stories, whether it's pure entertainment or whether it has some other aspiration. Does it feel like because you get to reflect things almost as they're happening without actually sort of doing based on fact or anything like that, does it feel like you are, in effect, making some kind of change? I mean, just today we have uh, President Obama stepping forward and saying that he's going to use executive uh, action against against gun violence in America has, in some way. I, 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 if there were a piece of filmed entertainment that was going to change the world, it would have been changed. It is not us. I think we do a really strong job. I think people who are coming to the show, by and large, already have a capacity, a capacity to change. None of us are perfect people, but, you know, look, I, I, and I don't want to say that, that those watching or sitting here were somehow better than other people, but you have interest and you have capacities. So that's already there. I think the only thing that we're really doing is slowing people down for an hour, um, telling stories in a way that are compelling that maybe you weren't thinking about so much previously, but the folks that are out there making change are dedicating their lives to it. It's, it's like the nurse that we had, the sane nurse, the sexual assault nurse. She dedicated her life to that. All we did was give a platform, and people find that compelling. I, I, I don't, I'm not, I, if we're doing change, it's because we're offering up uh, interesting stories and creating a space where anybody is invited to come and work on this kind of show. Uh, anybody. Felicity, do you, uh, do, you, do you feel spoiled <laughs> working with this guy and being able to work on the show as an artist? I do. I feel inspired, and I also feel really humbled. Every time I talk to John, I go, wow, you're really smart. <laughs> I'm so glad I just get to say your lines in order. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I, I mean, what a great, what a great, uh, what a great community that, I get to hang out with him just because just because I'm an actor. I mean, I don't know that he'd choose to hang out with me otherwise. <laughs> Drunk Timothy Hutton would. He'd be around. He'd be oh. kicking it. Tim's always hanging around. He's just, he's, you can't get rid of Tim. can He's great. Guys, I've been blessed. I've been really, really blessed. So thank, can, thank can, you. Congratulations on another, another great season. I can't wait to watch Yay. more of it. I'm four episodes in. It's really phenomenal. Guys, American Crime Wednesdays at... 10 p.m. on ABC. Fantastic show.